there's only one bottom line on Wall Street, and that bottom line is how much money you make. Whatever your background was, it's can you make money, can you contribute to profitable ideas? It's like being in a foxhole all day long with your enemies. I've seen many people come close to blows over a transaction. Greed is ugly. Make as much money as you can so that you can get out of there before it turns you to the dark side. Do you want me to buy it on a straight plus stick or a zero plus stick? It's a public offer, it's not me. Okay? So stop pulling my chain. If you weren't around, who would I make fun of? Well, I need you. You need me. Hey, heard you think it's easy to make money in this business? There, there is no limit for you, huh? What do you need? Uh, 90 bid, 10 thou. Sold. What am I taking? BK. How do you spell that? <laughs> You're a very funny guy. I try my best. <laughs> I think Wall Street gets a bad name. I think people think that it's a bunch of stuff shirts with master's degrees in finance and MBAs from Wharton and Harvard and forget about it. I mean, there are real people down here with real emotions and real passion. For floor traders, basically, they usually have some kind of headpiece on, like I do. So the earpiece is just to communicate with my booth to let them know what's, what I'm doing or what I should be doing. That's the mind behind the puppet. That's the one that's pulling my strings, basically. Those are mostly option booths right there. All the way at the top in the middle, that's an equity firm. And then South Balcony, that one is an equity and option firm. It does both. When uh, they call me with my orders, they tell me what I'm getting. It comes through my handheld, electronic device that I have. And I run around executing orders. Sometimes I have to leave them with the specialists who watch it for me because I have so many that I have to do. Jimmy, yeah. SEA, can I check it again, please? SEA, yeah. yes, sir. You Thank are. you very much. I got two thousand to buy. I got another two thousand to buy, yeah. Sell so 1,561 Apex. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Party on. Most people don't understand what I do. Most people don't understand what a hedge fund is. I mean, when I lived down in Florida, I said I ran a hedge fund. They thought I was in landscaping. You know, that's not even a joke. Traders were, were trying to uh, figure out the future. I mean, this is the, the last uh, undiscovered mystery on earth. Traders are no better than 100 years ago. You know, I mean, we're still guessing where the market is going to be. Yeah, we have technical analysis. We have all these tools to try and figure out what's going on, but we don't know. It's the great race to, to try and figure out the unknown. That's what it's about. Today my mom is coming over in a little bit to uh, say hello and, and clean and, and replenish my uh, water supplies. Um, she's she's kind of my personal uh, slave. May I come in? Hey mom. Hey Timmy. How are you? How are you? Good. Hello. I come here once every two or three weeks to clean his room and to do his bathroom. And it gives me a chance to see him. He's still my baby. Can't help it. My only child. There you go. So I just come in. I just feel needed. I do my mommy thing. See, I make Timmy's bed. And at home, my husband makes our bed. <laughs> and I have my own cleaning lady. But um, somehow or another, I became Timmy's cleaning lady. She cleans the apartment. She brings me food, water, does my laundry. Um, my other roommate cooks for me. My mom's not that good of a cook. Well, today it took me two and a half hours to get here. Some of my friends laugh at me. They can't believe that I go through this, but I enjoy it. You know, I don't really care what my friends think. I feel good that he has a clean bed in a clean bathroom. I don't have to worry about him for a few weeks because mothers always worry about their sons. Oh, did he? Oh, that explains something. That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't have any clue of that. So look, I, well, what we do is analyze companies. That sounds pretty bad for those guys. Where public valuation is inefficient, you can go in there and find an opportunity to sell something that's overvalued or buy something that's undervalued. The valuation of any company is best 
when it reflects the truth. If all you have is the company implying that things are great and things are growing, its stock is going to have a much higher valuation. I was out at the company. They said that they got the more short sellers. They're a reality check sometimes to almost an exclusively bullish presentation by whether it be the companies themselves or the fee-hungry Wall Street analysts that promote them. So it's good to have some balance to that. One of the companies we are following is a very expensive designer jean manufacturer. $250 jeans. Why anybody buys those, I don't know. But they do. People do buy them. So uh, this company, we think, has an inventory problem, but they're not acknowledging it to anybody. These jeans, a couple of years ago, were the hot jeans. And so they gave specific stores exclusive right to sell the jeans in a certain area. So we're going to go up to the Bronx. We're going to go to a kind of a retail alley. And the reason for that is one of the ways to check whether they're overstocked is to look and see if some of the B and C stores are showing up with the product. The other person that we want out there, you know the difference between a good product and a bad product, and you're going to bring them in and get them right where you want them to be. That's your strength. And some of the guys that you've shown in so far have an incredible potential. We want a guy that's young, aggressive, hungry, smart, and that hasn't lived through some of the market cycles that people over 30 have lived through. Why do you think that's important? Because they don't have any prejudices. We'd like to talk to anybody that feels they have a distinct edge in any kind of a market, whatever they base it on, whether they base it on migratory routes of elephants, that a legendary trader <laughs> who's attracted legendary investors uh, developed a program on. Say, say that again, what did he do? He developed a trading program based on migratory routes of elephants in Africa. What does that have to do with anything? There's, believe it or not, there's a pattern behind how they do what they do and where they go. And he found stocks that tend to follow that pattern. If he decides if the elephant goes too far to the right and it needs to come back to the left, he'll buy or sell a stock Are based on them, those patterns. Absolutely. It's true. It's incredible. I thought you were kidding. What it is is market's trend. If you could identify that trend and stay with that trend until that trend changes, you could make an awful lot of money. I need a drink. Mateo, what? what the hell are these handcuffs doing here? You shut up, I am losing money. I won them at Dave and Buster's. Go away. Oh. Leave me alone. I'm down five grand. Okay with the RS. Hey, Artie. You're on top of that ERS with the Midwest? There's a whole different language that's spoken on a trading floor. And everyone knows the language. Okay. Call me what's here. Don't lie to me. Uh, small at 91. What do you need to do? 2,500 shares. Right? I'm a buyer. 90 top. 10 grand. I don't want it there. It's a minus stick. Offered it one. There are correct ways to bid for a stock. There's correct ways to offer or sell a stock. And if you don't do it the right way, the person's not going to know what you're talking about. Can't sell it at 90. Yet. All right. I'll buy a stock away at 90. All right. And I'll pay 91 for 7,000. It's old. What do I take? 3,090 is, uh, is ATS. Uh -huh. 91 stocks BK. How do you spell that? No. It was old the 30th time you said it. Okay? It's still funny. Yeah, you can drop it. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. I love it. <laughs> the Gecko. It's a blue shirt with a white collar, as popularized by Michael Douglas's character Gordon Gecko in the movie Wall Street. They go in and out of style, but everybody's got one in the back of their closet. As in, hey man, you gonna wear your gecko? We want you to be out there, get in sync with the investment community, and you are. You want to get that rhythm, you're nailing that rhythm, and you're gonna bring us some of the biggest investors and some of the biggest managers on the planet. Because they're attracted to you naturally, and after the initial attraction, you have the follow through, so it just gets done. Everybody's going to listen to you, so it's your platform, and you can do anything that you want to do. And, and the good thing about you is you don't take advantage of it. 
you don't know it is a good thing. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't. So, I mean, that's a great thing. That's a gift. Forgetting about business, your biggest challenge is going to be to fend off the wedding proposals. <laughs> Wall Street is paying a high valuation for the stock because it believes that this is a great company that's not just hit it big in last year's denim craze, but is going to have a long growth story. If, in fact, they do have an inventory problem and they're going to struggle to meet sales and earnings expectations in the future, so there's money to be made in covering the short by low, sell high, but just in reverse order. Jeans of the make that we're looking at, front and center, right in the window. So, I'm gonna go check another store. <laughs> yeah, they got them. These guys are moving product through channels that they initially didn't intend to. The only conclusion I can come up with is because they have excess product and they're trying to get it out the door so they can book it as revenues and, and earnings. This is supposed to be an exclusive, highly demanded brand that has cachet. They must have had several hundred jeans in there. And that's just what's on display. Jeans and fashion are, are fads, and so the market shouldn't pay massive multiples for today's hip jean company. This was just a little piece of the puzzle that says, this, the, the world is flooded with these $300 jeans, and we just saw, you know, one example of that. Well, I work out of my apartment because I'm a cheap Jew. I can say that. I am Jewish. People say, get an office, and we'll give you money. And I say, no, give me money, and then I'll get an office. Make it worth my while. I mean, this is a tax deduction. Timmy never ceases to amaze me, okay? And he's always been like this. I think he received about twelve or 13000 from his bar mitzvah. I don't remember the exact amount, but I know he turned it into 900000 maybe a million. I have complete confidence in Timmy. Not just because I'm his mother, and I'm not just saying that because I'm his mother. I'm not just saying that because I'm his mother. I don't think you'll ever lose money. Right, I believe you. You don't think I'll ever lose money? Well, you're going to lose money, but you're all also... I mean, everyone loses money at some point in their life, but you're never going... But you're not saying this just because you're my mother. No. <laughs> Shut up. You hit me? You gonna hit me on camera? <laughs> Bring back my childhood? <laughs> oh, right. I was an abusive mother. I'm glad you can finally admit it. Thank you. <laughs> Abused child. <laughs> now let's laugh about it. You can't see the scars. They're buried in my heart, you bitch. He's got a great sense of humor, okay? He always, he's always made people laugh. But Timmy's highly intelligent. I feel very grateful that at a young age he found what he wanted to do. He has his identity, you know. He knows what he's doing and he loves what he does. Okay, Timmy, I'm leaving. All right, one sec. I'm in the middle of the trade. Okay. Okay, bye. Hi, sweetheart. Love you. Yeah, love you too. Bye. Bye. Today I'm going to meet with a hedge fund manager who was recommended to me by a friend. His name is Kevin Casey, and he runs a hedge fund that focuses primarily on value investments. He has had a great track record, but is still relatively small, and he would like to grow. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about your background? In uh, the summer of '02 is when I quit the job I was at. I thought stocks were cheap enough, and started a hedge fund, had a mortgage in the apartment. There were a thousand stocks trading at 10 P or less. And that was like the first time in two decades that they were that cheap. And so you yourself took on a lot of risk uh, to become an entrepreneur and start this venture. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how much of your own money do you have invested in your fund? Basically like 90% of my liquid net worth. That's very good. That's a convincing argument for investors. <laughs> 
Every summer we usually try to hire a few, mostly it's college level interns, people that have majored in finance are looking to get a little experience, add to the resume. Um, Daniel's the son of one of our senior traders here, asked if he can come in and get a flavor of what goes on here, what dad does for a living, and uh, you know he's been a good asset, uh, he's a hard worker. He's learned a lot I think in the last few weeks too, so we'll abuse him for the rest of the summer. I'm learning from a girl over there, her name is Liz, she teaches me all the all the tricks and trades of how to work the book. Crazy that I'm the only female on the post. I'm like everyone's mother. She's the matron of the post. I want that. What I do is back here there are a bunch of files and papers that cut that they spit out through their computers and they come out through here and we have to file them, ripping them off, but they come out like rapid fire, usually in the morning in the late afternoon, right about now. They usually start coming out rapidly. Mr. Nunn here shows me how to how to read this, this these charts here. And um, teaching I, them how to follow the market. Yeah. I read these too. I, I, I figured them out too. Is it harder or not as hard as you thought? I work I work harder. No, yeah, yeah. Stop chewing your nails. <laughs>
instead of the imposter. In the meantime, you've done nothing. I'm just Ask the brain trust in the booth what they want us to do. Take me out of 20. <laughs> if you work on Wall Street, it comes down to what you're all about. I would absolutely recommend it if you're the right personality. Good night, man. Nice job, man. Three days from now, I have a meeting with the Fund of Funds. I met with them six months ago. Never heard anything back from them. Thought I did horribly. They called me up the other day saying, we're still following you. We love your strategy. We love your fund. We're thinking about uh, giving you two and a half to three million. Uh, come in on Monday, talk to us, let us know um, how's it going. Out of the blue. So all my work, you know, you don't think it's paying off, you don't think anyone's paying attention. Out of the blue, someone comes and you just double the size of your fund. Doesn't it feel like a lot of times as soon as you're about to, to give up, you make money yes. or, or you have a good yes. opportunity? It's like hooking up with girls when you're it's not looking for true. it, it just happens. There's Sweet. a common statement known as <laughs> you money, where the extent that you can say, you know, I don't F you, I can walk into my boss's office and pee on his, on his desk. And what, it doesn't matter because I have enough money to do whatever I want to do. Where do you guys I define that? The problem is, is like, you know, f money could be a 10 million, but like, yeah, then, then, then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're hanging out with people who have 10 million and then they have jets. They have jets. And then like, you're like, I, I can't afford a jet with 10 million. So I need 100 million, you know? If you're a loser and you only have $200 million, it's as good as a cool guy with 2 million. Yeah, yeah, kind of, it, it does depend, on, million, it does depend on what you're spending on. 25 million. Hundred million. I say hundred million dollars. Yeah, right. As well, hundred yeah. million. F you money is around twenty million. Yeah. Two hundred million. You greedy mother. F you money. My opinion is, say you have ten million dollars, you invest in five percent treasuries. You're bringing in five hundred thousand dollars a year. That's enough to send your kid to college, buy braces, or you can go on a nice vacation, you can buy a boat, you can have a summer house. I think that's you money because you can do whatever you want. You guys agree? You can have, God bless him. You can't. You can't have a private jet though. All right, you can't have a private jet. But you can live the ultimate middle class, upper middle class lifestyle that everybody dreams of. F you money is money that it, you don't have to reason Absorbent. for it. Right. Exactly. It's ridiculous. I don't think you have to you reason throw, with $10 throw, million. Dollars. No, but you can't waste 20000 on some stripper that you make. $500,000 tax-free income. You can do income. a lot of stuff for upper middle class. $500,000 But the key word is upper income. middle, not upper. Right. Amen. You, oh, you just have cheap taste. Agree. That's good. Have fun with I your... I have cheap your... taste, too. I agree with That's that. good. Have, have, fun, with taste, have, have fun with your daughter's bracelet. <laughs> 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 because, I mean, a 500,000... Oh, what are you going to do? There's, there's a f***ing drop there. You're not going to pay me my Whatever. It doesn't even matter. Drink some water. 500,000 in New York is nothing. Dude, you can do whatever you want, $10 million. You can do whatever you want, not whatever we want. I want to be able to say, I quit this. I'll be a teacher at 40 years old. I'll have my boat in Florida. And I can say F you because I have F you money. Well, have fun in your middle class Florida trailer home. I like the Bahamas better. I just want to be able to go to any store I want, any f***ing car dealership I want, and just do whatever I want, you know, buy whatever I want. At any time, any time during the day. If some single mother comes up to me and she's waiting at this table and I'm just at a diner getting some bite I to eat. I'll give you a $200 tip on $100. $200 yeah, and right. her kid needs to go to, child, to go to college. I want to be able to say, hey, here's 20 grand. Send your kid to college. <laughs> you know, I think that's what, it is. honestly, that's, how, that's how I feel. Oh, it's true. <laughs> that's beautiful. Sorry, Sandy. It's so gross. Ever since I put it in. He dropped all my clothes on the cockroach. Try to help. Hands on research. Pretty pony, pretty pony. Nobody can bullshit as good as you. 